You've heard of nuclear bombs. Well, carbon bombs are just as dangerous. Carbon bombs have the potential to destroy life on Earth. Carbon bombs are the fossil fuel reserves which the oil and gas and coal companies intend to exploit, which will release huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. There's nearly 200 of these projects in the pipeline which will easily push us past two degrees of global heating and perhaps beyond and are likely to push Earth systems past their tipping points and create an uninhabitable planet. And these are all happening, they're just going ahead, it's just been normalised. Yeah, we'll grant you permission to exploit this shale gas basin, we'll grant you permission to exploit these North Sea oil reserves. They're literally signing off on the extinction of most life on Earth, including most human life. You just go ahead, guys. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, go and make some money. Just make sure that you keep funding our political party. That's fine. Yeah, go ahead. Fossil fuel companies need to spend only a very small amount of their money to protect their investments. They spend that money on buying politicians, on funding political parties, but also on funding lobbyists and in particular think tanks. And what those think tanks are, the ones who don't reveal who funds them, are lobbyists who don't declare that they're lobbyists. So they have more credibility because people say, oh, they're think tanks, they, they think about stuff. Recently, we had a case of the Global Warming Policy Foundation, one of these so-called think tanks, which claims it's independent, uh, which has refused to reveal its funders. And lo and behold, there's been buckets of US fossil fuel money channeled into it. Perhaps the most dangerous of all these fossil fuel interests when it comes to changing the political conversation has been the Koch brothers, Charles and David Koch. They have poured hundreds of millions of dollars into trying to alter our perceptions of what's going on in the world in their interests and the interests of other fossil fuel companies. The Conservative MPs who've been trying to sink the government's net zero programme, they've been funded by fossil fuel interests as well. Surprise, surprise. This is how the system operates. You have to fund people who are going to talk on your behalf but are not seen to be linked to you because if they are seen to be linked to you, they lose their credibility. So you fund them secretly and they try to keep the sources of their money hidden from you and me. The great environmentalist Aldo Leopold said, the price of an ecological education is to live in a world of wombs. In other words, it's to know how awful the damage we're doing to the world is. That comes back to me when I think of what's happening to our coral reefs. If we reach 1.5 degrees of warming, we've lost almost all of them, at least 95%. If we reach two degrees, that is it. No more coral reefs at all. That's what we're on course for. So if we're prepared to lose all our coral reefs, these stunning, beautiful, amazing ecosystems, which are already now suffering from bleaching, a step just before the coral reefs die, almost universally in places like the Great Barrier Reef, what else are we prepared to lose? If that's a necessary sacrifice so that fossil fuel industries can make their billions, then what isn't a necessary sacrifice? Oh, the rainforests. Oh, people, huge populations of people where land is becoming uninhabitable. I mean, we've just seen this massive heat wave in India and Pakistan, and that's just at the beginning of the process. This is with just over one degree of global heating. We haven't any conception of how far this is going to go. Huge tracts of the planet where billions of people live are simply going to become too hot to sustain life, let alone to sustain crops and all the other things that we need to survive and we just haven't got our heads around this but yeah all these are necessary sacrifices so the fossil fuel companies can keep making their profits in fact the entire habitable planet is a necessary sacrifice so that fossil fuel industries can keep making their profits I spent years of my life fighting climate deniers, people who said, oh, this climate science is all nonsense, of course humans aren't changing the world's climate, and that's kind of over. There's a few idiot holdouts, but that's pretty well it. Most people have stopped trying to push that line. Instead, the dangerous force now is the politics deniers, the people who say, Technology is going to sort this out automatically. The market is going to sort it out. We don't have to do anything. We don't need any political protest. We don't need any political change. We'll just let these processes operate automatically. It doesn't work like that. 
The only way we're going to protect the living planet is through political change, is through political protest, through political challenge. Now, of course, the media loves the politics deniers just as much as it loved the climate deniers 10 years ago, because the politics deniers are saying we didn't challenge power. Power is fine. So the billionaire press, which is owned by billionaires, they don't want any challenge to power. So they give a huge platform to the politics deniers, to people like Bill Gates, Steven Pinker, Matt Ridley, Oded Galor, who basically say we just can leave this to technology, to demographic change. We don't need to intervene. This politics denial is the Disney version of environmental science. The idea that through the invisible hand of the market and the magic of technology, everything will work out just fine in the end. The fairy dust will be sprinkled over the situation and everything will resolve. It just does not work like that. If good things happen, they happen because people have struggled for them. If you're in a place which is beautiful, it's because someone struggled for that place. If you're in a society which is functional, it's because someone has struggled for that society. If you're in a nation in which everybody is well fed and everybody is cared for and everybody has a decent home, it's because people have struggled for that. It does not happen by itself. We need hope, we need optimism, but it has to be rooted in political and environmental realities. The optimism which says, yeah, we reckon it'll all work out by itself. You know, we'll trust the powers that be. We'll trust in technology to deliver. We'll trust in some vague social forces to see that everything comes right. That is groundless optimism. And groundless optimism is a threat to life on Earth. We need grounded optimism. We need the optimism which is vested in ourselves. The optimism which is vested in our preparedness to stand up and fight for life on Earth. We need to realise, as David Graeber pointed out, humans made these systems, humans can change these systems. All the systems which look monolithic and huge and terrifying and overwhelming to us, these were made by people. These can be unmade by people, they can be made differently by people. And recognising that is to unleash the greatest power we possess, the power to recognise that human societies are made by human beings, the rules that govern human societies are made by human beings, and we are those human beings. To reclaim our power, we need to reclaim our media. It's no good relying on the billionaire press to express what we, the people, and the rest of life on Earth requires to get through this century. That's why we urgently need alternative media like Double Down News. So please become a supporter. Please support Double Down on Patreon.